What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about how you can raise your SAT math score to anything over 700 and even get yourself up to 800. So the thing about SAT math is that people don't really know where to start. So people might be wondering, should I study the concepts or should I study, should I just do more practice problems? Should I time myself or should I not time myself? I'm going to go over all those things in detail and I'm going to explain by the score ranges so that if you fall into that certain category, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do and what to do for the next category and eventually get yourself up to seven to 800 score range. Okay. So SAT math score breaks down into three different groups. The first group is going to be, let's see, anything over, anything under 600, 600 and below. Okay. Second group is going to be 600 to 700. And the third group is going to be anything over 700 plus all the way to 800, okay? So when it, when, if you get anything below 600, here's something you need to know. Don't do practice exam. If you do practice exams, you're wasting, you're, waste, blah, you're wasting valuable resources, all these great exams. Don't take practice exams. That's, what you, what you, uh, that's not what you need to do right now. What you need to do right now is just study concepts. On SAT, there's about 27 concepts that show up. And if you're getting anything below 600, that means you are lacking maybe at least 70% of the concepts on the SAT. So if you keep on taking practice exams, you're gonna get maybe the 30% that you know correct, but the other 70% that you don't know, you're always gonna get them wrong. So you're never gonna go over 600. Does that make sense? Good. So if you're anything below 600, just study concepts, just buy some books, and I recommend um, College Panda's math uh, study guide, I think. He has a workbook and a study book, but get the College Panda's math book. Um, he's not paying me, but I have been I pretty much looked at all the books out there on the market, whether it's Barnes & Noble or Amazon, and I looked at every single one of them, and it turns out that College Panda's one is the best one in the market right now for at least March 2019. So, 600 and below, just study the concepts. That's all you need to do. Also, no practice. Don't do any practice exams. No, no timing, no practice exams. Don't do anything. Just study the concepts for at least two to three months so that you can at least get the concepts down. Well, if you get that, if you can get them down in like a month, hey, that's good. That's fine. Just, yeah, you got the concepts down. <laughs> Anyways, so let's say you study the concepts and if you take a practice, practice exam again to see where you're at right now, you're probably going to fall under anywhere between six to 700, right? So, Remember what I said about the concepts, um, you know 30% and you don't know 70%. So the range for 600 and below is about 30 to 70. You know 30%, but you don't know 70%. If you're between six and 700, that means you know about 90% and you really don't know that 10%. But think about that 10% is, you really don't know what you don't know. Does that make sense? You don't know what you don't even know. The only way for you to find out exactly where you need to work on is by taking practice exams, okay? So in this case, study concepts, well, we already did that. So what you're gonna do here, you're gonna take practice exams, right? And this one, don't time it, okay? Do not time your practice exams. The whole purpose of taking practice exam here is for you to find out exactly what you know and what you don't know. So you can target and study and focus on what you don't know. Does that make sense? So here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna take the practice exams and there will be certain type of questions that you just don't know how to solve. Most of them you're gonna know within like maybe like a 30 second to a minute, you're gonna be like, oh, this is how you solve it, blah, blah, blah. And you're gonna get it right. But there will be those questions that you just look at for like 15 minutes and you just can't figure out how to solve, right? That's where you need to work on. Those are the holes. See, when I tutor my students, I like to use a bucket method. See, it's like this. You're pouring water into the bucket, right? I suck at drawing, but let me draw this out real quick. So let's say you're pouring water into this thing, right? And there's these little holes, right? So the water is your exam. And if it fills up to the top, you're gonna get 800 on math. But thing is, because there are these little holes down here, the water is leaving, which is preventing you from getting to 800. See, these holes right here are the concepts that you're lacking. And as you guessed, what we need to do is identify these concepts and you need to start plugging them because those are the only things that's preventing you from getting to 800. Does that make sense? And how do we find these holes? Practice exams, don't time it. 
Don't time it, take the practice exams, find out where your holes are, then start plugging them. Does that make sense? Good. So if you got anything above 700, good job. That's a, that's a big, uh, big achievement. But let's say you are now at the three to eight, um, 700 plus range, right? And you're trying to go for that perfect score. See, here's the thing. If you're at seven to 800 right now, you probably, you know, hundred percent of the concepts, right? There's nothing, you know, you know exactly everything that shows up on the exam. All you need to do is just practice, practice, practice. And here's the thing. You have to keep on doing the practices. And this time, this is when you start timing yourself. You work on the time management skill. You check out when you get done and see how much time you have left. And you try to see how many questions you get wrong. And even, even when you're at this stage, there might be a little hole or two that you weren't even aware of. But that's the thing, you can catch them. You have to catch them. You can't just constantly take exams over and over and over and without knowing, without finding out what you're missing. Does that make sense? Good. So if you are at 700 plus range, all you have to do is just practice. It's going to take time to get yourself to the, that 800 score. Okay. So let me, uh, let's summarize what happened here. Oh, actually, let me just, let me just give you guys one more tip. So let's say you are at maybe like 750 plus, that's only getting maybe like four to five questions wrong, right? If you're at that stage, you're probably gonna realize, but I'm just gonna let you give you guys an advance, I'll let you guys know in advance. The reason why you're getting these questions wrong is not because you don't know how to solve them, but it's because of silly mistakes, okay? And based on my experience, silly mistakes is the worst type of hurdle you're gonna have to get over. It's the hardest thing to get over because it's there, there's not a concept that you can study. It's just a mistake. Okay. So just keep in mind that when you, once you get to the 750 plus range, you're going to be make, you're going to be making crazy amount of silly mistakes and it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt like hell. You're going to be just telling yourself, Oh, why did you, have, why did you have to make that mistake? It's, it's terrible, but silly mistakes. If you can find a way to get over it and not make mistakes, you're eventually going to get yourself to 800. Does that make sense? Good. So we're going to summarize what we just talked about today in this video, because that was a lot of information and I know you guys can't focus. Just kidding. I love you guys. So when it comes to SAT math score, if you want to get to the 800, there's like three different categories. First category is anything below 600. If you're on, if you're under this category, here's what you have to do. Don't do, don't take practice exams. Just study the concepts. Don't move on to the next steps until you get all the concepts down. Okay. So, you got all the concepts down, you take the practice exam, you're probably gonna get something over 600, okay? So if you, have, if you are at the second category, which is six to 700 range, you probably know 90% of the concepts, it's just that you're missing the 10%, but you wouldn't know what those 10% are, but the only way to find out is by taking practice exam, right? You're gonna take the exams and there will be specific type of questions that repeatedly you get wrong. That's how you can find out what concepts you're missing. By the way, don't time yourself here, that's for later, okay? So if you keep on doing um, practices on time and let's say maybe like maybe after like six, seven, eight exams, you take another practice exam timed, what's going to happen is you're probably going to fall under the seven to 800 range, right? In this case, you know all the concepts, right? Here's what you need to, here's why you need to start. Just kidding. Here in this case, what you need to start working on is your time management skill and time management skill only develops as you do more practice, right? So have yourself a nice wristwatch and just time yourself and see how much time you have left at the end of the, each exam. So my students who do really well and who eventually get to pretty close or even up to 800. So for <clears throat> uh, section three, it gives you 25 minutes, but when they finish, they have, about, they have about 11 minutes left. And for section four, which is 55 minutes left, they have about 25 minutes left, okay? So just keep in mind, if you can get yourself to that level, you're, you're on the right path. You're on the way to 800. Does that make sense? Good. So if you're at this range, just work on practice exams, time yourself, and you'll be set. And once you get to that 750 plus range, you know everything. You're like the SAT math God. Okay. But in this case, you're going to get a couple questions wrong. And that's because of silly mistakes. It's not like, it's not that you don't know the concept. You know how to solve every single question that shows up on SAT. Okay. It's just the silly mistakes. So your goal here is to find out how to not make mistakes. Does that make sense? Good. So that's it for today. Uh, if you found, if you found this video helpful, just hit that like button, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. And oh, by the way, if you guys have any more questions, just 
feel free to leave them down below. I'm, pro I'm probably going to personally look at them and then reply to every single one of them. Okay. So that's it for today. If you guys have any questions, I already said that. Never mind. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.